How to make your own power meter striking pad. All the power pads that are out there are crazy expensive. So if you want to do a tournament in your school or, uh, you know, have your students test out their power and compare one kick one way with the same kick performed slightly differently, you can't do it unless you have like $6,000, $16,000 to spend on a high-end uh, power pad that's going to you know, measure every little aspect of your kick, which is great, but not something that everybody needs in their little school. So one night I was sleeping and I had a dream. It came to me. What if I could make my own power pad with some basic materials? And a vision just appeared in my head. I was laying there and it was like, boom! This is how you can do it. These are the materials you need. Here's how you can get them. And this is how you put it together. And it just like popped into my head like divine inspiration. Three simple items that you can get really easily and really cheaply. You put them together with a little bit of duct tape and you have a power pad that suits all of the needs of either a tournament or uh, a school and will fulfill those needs for your students. It will measure their power relative to a previous kick. I mean, without a lot of research, it won't give you exact uh, numerological values for each kick, but it will measure the power between one kick and the next and it will do it consistently, unlike sword breaking where the grains can be different or uh, you know, hitting a pad so that somebody moves back. And that's you know, uh, very subjective. So this is how you make the power pad that came to me in my dream. You will need a roll of duct tape. You won't need a lot, but it's good to have an entire roll. It's a strong, powerful, adhesive substance. You'll need a peak flow meter. You can go to your local pharmacy and you could probably buy one there or you can order them online. They're really cheap and exactly what we need for this project. You'll also need a, a stomp rocket or a bubble torpedo, something with a big balloon type thing and a hose you can stomp on to make the rocket shoot up. And of course you need a body or a pad, one with a zipper on the bottom or some way to remove the insides and then reinsert them. Make sure you get a really good sensitive peak flow meter with a high number level because this is what you're gonna to use to measure the power of your kicks. Don't get a round or gun-shaped peak flow meter, get a rectangular one like this. One of the coolest parts about this uh, DIY power pad that we're making right now is that it's completely analog. There's no mechanical components. So you don't have to worry about electricity or batteries or computers. It's completely analog, which makes it much more durable and easy to fix and cheaper. Let's get started. Okay, so first you're going to take your pad. You're going to unzip it and pull out the foam from the inside. Now, if your pad is well-made, this is not going to be super easy. You're gonna to have to finagle it, uh, push the pad, pull it, squeeze it. But your goal is to get that foam out of the pad without breaking anything. Whew, we did it. That was a challenge. Now, make sure it's this kind of more uh, flexible foam, not a really hard, rigid foam. Now, you're gonna take your stomp rocket or bubble torpedo, open it up, and take out the balloon or stomp bubble. Then you're going to take out the hose and set that aside. That's all we're gonna need from this. The rest of it you can throw away or donate or do whatever you want with. Now take the stomp bubble and you're going to place it sideways in the center of your foam like this. Then you're going to take a pen, I recommend uh, a Sharpie, and you're going to trace it on the foam so that you know exactly the size and shape on the foam. Then you're going to cut out that section of foam that you just traced. And you're gonna to wanna to cut it deep enough where the stomp bubble can sit inside of the opening and be about three quarters of the way into the foam, but not all the way into the foam, not completely flush. Next, you're gonna take a piece of cardboard to offer some backing to the stomp rocket, stomp bubble. So what you're gonna do is you're going to take that piece of cardboard and just cut out a piece that fits inside of the bottom of the hole you cut in the foam. 
Now comes the most important part. We are going to make the power measuring device. So you're gonna take the hose from the stomp rocket and put it into the mouth of the peak flow meter. Then you're gonna duct tape it on there. When you duct tape it, make sure that the duct tape seals any holes or opening between the tube and the peak flow meter. So no extra air should come out or leak out. Then you take the tube and you attach it to the air bubble like this. Now, if you press on it and smack the, the bubble, you'll see that the peak flow meter shoots up really high, really quickly. So this is not good. You don't want this. We're gonna have to do one more step to stop that from being quite so responsive. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the hose off and then put a little piece of duct tape over part of the opening in the stomp bubble. This will make it so less air comes out quickly. And then the peak flow meter won't go quite so high, quite so quickly. Now, if you're doing this device for younger kids, then you might want to leave more of an opening. Whereas if you're doing it for black belts or higher ranks, you want to do a smaller opening so that the peak flow meter can measure greater or lesser power more efficiently and effectively. Once you've calibrated your air output by making the hole in the stomp bubble exactly the right size, remove the hose from the stomp bubble and from the peak flow meter, and we're going to assemble the pad now. Take the hose, insert it over the stomp bubble opening, and then you're going to use a piece of duct tape to seal it on there tightly so that even under great pressure, it won't come off. Next, take the bubble and hose and place it inside of the groove you cut in the foam cube. Place it in so that the hose is sticking out the side. Then take a long piece of duct tape and strap it around the foam so that it doesn't change the shape of the foam, but it solidly holds the stomp bubble in place so that even if it's kicked or stomped or uh, messed around with, it will not move. Really secure it, but again, don't put the tape on so tightly it compresses the bubble or it changes the shape of the foam. Now comes the fun part. We have to put this entire foam and air bubble and hose conglomeration back into the pad without messing up anything we just did. So make sure that it lines up correctly with the pad bag and then work your hardest to fit to squeeze the entire thing back inside, again, without messing up anything we just did or putting a kink in the hose. It's gonna take some work, a uh, lot of gentle pushing, pinching, and make sure when you put it in that the bubble part is facing towards the front of the pad. If you put it in backwards, it won't work. Now, feel in the pad where the hose is coming out the side. So find that spot, and then you're gonna cut a little hole right in the side of the pad. And then you're gonna fish out the hose from that hole and pull it out. Then bang on the pad a little bit and feel how the air pushes through the hose and make sure that there's no kinks or anything blocking it. Now zip up the bottom of the pad and bring the hose and pull it up towards the top of the pad. Now you're gonna measure the length of the hose there. Then take the peak flow meter, put it right against the top of the pad and measure the hose and cut off the part of the hose uh, higher than a few inches into the mouth of the peak flow meter. Then you're gonna take the hose, put it inside the mouth of the peak flow meter and then duct tape around it and on it so it stays in and no air can get out through the openings in the mouth of the peak flow meter. Next, Take the peak flow meter and the hose and place it against the side of the pad. Use two strips of duct tape to hold it against the side of the pad. Make sure the duct tape does not cover any part of the slide piece that goes up and down because you want that to move freely. So a piece along the bottom below the numbers and before the bead that goes up and down and another piece on the very top of the pad above the piece that goes up and down. Don't let it cover any part of the gap that slides up and down in the peak flow meter.
Now feel for where the bubble is in the center of the pad. Take the duct tape and make an X right over that bubble so that people kicking the pad will know exactly where they should kick to get the most effective response from the pad. This way the pad will measure both power, speed, and accuracy all at once. If you don't have a holder, you can attach the power pad to a freestanding punching bag or wave master. You need an elastic strap with hooks on either end and hopefully a pad with side handles. Now, if you take the hooks and you put it through the side handle, wrap it around the wave master and hook it on the other side, when you hit it, it's very likely to pop off. What you need to do is put the elastic strap through the pad on the side and hook it onto itself as opposed to hooking it onto the pad. So it makes a full loop. Then wrap it around the Wave Master and hook it on the same way on the other side. This will make it much more secure. And if you put the Wave Master against a wall or the freestanding punching bag against a wall, it won't have as much give and you'll get a more true reading. In my power tutorial, I talk about the formula for power, one-half mass times velocity squared equals power. Velocity is squared and mass is halved. So a round kick traveling in an arcing motion will be a lot more powerful than a side kick coming straight in with the mass of your body behind it. A round kick or turning kick just comes in faster. So you'll find that because of that arcing motion and speed, the round kick will score higher on this than the side kick most times. Imagine at the end of class, you finish training and all of your students, all of the people in class uh, are, are ready for a cool down or a game or something fun. You could set up this power pad that we're making today and you could have a competition among your students. You could take a bracket and have each kid hit it three times or each adult hit it three times and write down the scores. You give a prize to whoever has the most powerful kick in the class and everyone could strive to make one kick better compared to the one before. It would be an excellent tool to be able to measure the progress of your kick, the progress of your training, the efficacy of your training. If you host tournaments, small local tournaments or big national tournaments, and you want to add an extra division, something that's fun, something that's engaging, other than board breaking, something a little bit less wasteful perhaps than board breaking, you could make several of these power pads and have one in each ring and offer a medal or a division where a group of students, a group of competitors, will get to take three or four shots on the power pad and whoever can generate the most power or the highest score can uh, win the gold, silver, and bronze medal for that division. Step number two, whenever you're ready. Step in front is not a great idea. 170. Good step. 
Second number three, whenever you're ready. Any kick you want. Thank you so much for watching my tutorial on how to make a power meter bag. Don't forget to share, comment, like, and subscribe to this video and channel respectively because I have lots of really cool videos that I'm sure you guys will enjoy, including how to make this, uh, this uh, freestanding punching bag and how to do all the kicks correctly so you get a really high score on the power pad. So you know, it's a full service channel. So share, comment, like, subscribe, turn on the notification button so you can see when I get a new video. And have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Peace.